In this presentation, we look at an overview of financial accounting. In our previous presentation, we had a basic introduction to the components of financial accounting. Now we'll go in more depth and look at a high level view of some of their processes. Now let's look at a high level view at an accounts payable process. You might want to purchase an, an item for your organization, hence you could raise a purchase order. And once the item comes through, it will be a goods receipt. And then you might also get the invoice at the same time or might receive the invoice from the vendor later. And it becomes an invoice receipt process. Each of these sections you see can be an individual process on its own. Then the when you need to make the payment to the vendor, depending on the payment terms, either you might have to pay immediately or you get a 10 day allowance or 30 day allowance and so on. And you need to proceed to make the vendor payment. Let's see how this will affect the financial accounting module. During the time of purchase order, it's merely a commitment document. Hence, there is no financial entry taken place. At the time of goods receipt, you are going to get a physical inventory to your organization. It can come under your current assets. You might also purchase some fixed assets using your purchase order as well. And then it will come under your fixed assets. When you receive the invoice from the vendor, you are committed to pay the vendor. It becomes a liability to you. That means you need to make the payment to a vendor. So it becomes an accounts payable liability. It can be a short term liability and this will all reflect in your balance sheet. Once you start making the payment to the vendor, then you will have to pay via your bank account. So hence it will impact your current assets. This type of uh, expense could be an expense item or it can also be a capital item. So if it's coming as a fixed asset, it can be a capital expense item. If it's a normal day to day operational expenses, it can come as an operational expenses item. So this is how it will be impacting your balance sheet and your PL statement. The goods receipt, invoice receipt, vendor payment, this will all be financial transactions and hence it will be, hence it'll be directly recorded in your balance sheet and PL statement. Let's look at a high level view of the accounts receivable process. You are selling an item to your customer and you can sell as a sales order. The items that you're going to sell, you can create a sales order and present it to your customer. And then you can start issuing your goods. It becomes a goods issue process. You can send out the billing or the bills information to your customer. It becomes a billing process. And then finally, you are expecting your customer to pay you it becomes a customer payment process. At the time of sending out merely the sales order, it does not have any financial entry. However, once you send your goods to your customer, it will be a financial entry as it will impact your inventory under your current assets. At the time of billing, you are expecting your customer to pay, so it will become a current asset under accounts receivable. Your customers are expecting to be, uh, your customers uh, you are expecting your customers to pay you and once a customer makes a payment then you will take out the money from your accounts receivable and input under your current your cash flow that's your under your bank accounts so this can impact your balance sheet it can also impact your penal statement if you because it's going to be a revenue item for you at the time of billing, it will be a revenue for you and the customer overseas will probably you're going to make an entry like revenue of some particular item you're selling, a credit entry, and you're going to make a debit entry under your accounts receivable main ledger. So it will be coming under your sub ledger called customer and you're going to mark some a debit entry over there. We will get into this in more detail when you go specifically to the financial transactions later in our presentations. For now, just have an idea that during the account receivable process, these are some of the high level processes involved when you're sending some items to your customer. Let's look at another important example using the fixed asset life cycle. This comes under the asset accounting section. For example, you are buying an asset from a vendor. It becomes an asset acquisition process. You can also create your own asset in your organization when you try to build something and you, or you can combine multiple assets to make one final fixed asset. But let's look at a simple example. You are buying a fixed asset from a vendor and it becomes an asset acquisition. Hence, in your balance sheet, you record that fixed asset item under this section. 
and then you continue to your, use your asset while you are using, this asset can depreciate and you will be having a depreciation expense. It will come under your PL statement. And if you after using your assets for many years, if you want to salvage it or you want to fully dispose of it, it becomes a disposal process. Or you can also sell part of that asset and then retain some part of it. There can be many different types of transactions happening. If you are completely disposing your asset, then your fixed asset will be going off from your fixed asset section of your balance sheet. And if you are selling this item to another customer, you might have some revenue and it can be recorded as a revenue in your penal statement as well. So hence you can see even during the process of acquiring an asset, using the asset and disposing it, it can affect your balance sheet and penal statement. Hence it's recorded all under the financial accounting sections. Let's look at another important section in financial accounting and that is your general ledger. All your financial transactions are recorded in your general ledger. You will hear later a terminology called a sub ledger. Items such as customers, vendors, assets, these are called sub ledgers because you record your transactions directly against a specific customer or a vendor or a fixed asset. And these sub ledgers point to a general ledger. For example, you can have customer A, customer B, customer C, and they will form the sub ledgers, whereas the general ledger will be your accounts receivable, which lies in your balance sheet. So all your financial transactions recorded in your general ledger are ultimately combined into balance sheet and penal statements, which produce your financial statements. All entries recorded in your general ledger are real time. So whenever you record it, it immediately updates your financial postings and your financial statements. The system ensures that the rules are always followed. For example, the debit amounts and credit amounts have to be equal. You cannot have even one cent be off from your debits and credits. System also ensures that it's reliable. All entries that you make in the system, you can always track to the original source document. This helps to save time and money and to always have a real-time financial statement for your organization to make accurate financial data. We had a brief overview of the financial accounting components. That's the accounts receivable process, accounts payable process, fixed asset process, as well as general ledger. Now know the important differences between financial accounting and management accounting. Financial accounting deals with the financial transactions incurring in your balance sheet and penal statement. Whereas in management accounting, you are looking at more internal accounting. That is the costs associated within your own divisions and departments. It can be called as cost centers or within your own segments, which can be profitable, such as profit centers. You can further analyze profitability. These are all components of management accounting. Also, you should understand the basic of how costs flow within financial accounting. Just like we saw the accounts receivable process, how are the entries required when a customer buys an item, what are the debit entries and what are the credit entries. Having a basic understanding of these debits, credits and a little bit of financial accounting knowledge will help you to understand the course better. Also, during the presentations, I will also be explaining the basic debit and credit entries. And if you can recall those very quickly while we are going through the transactions, it will help you to understand better as well.